Hello again, everyone. Welcome to the Black Book today, the 2010 version for the Standard Bread Horse Sales Company here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. My name's Sam McKee, joined by Bob Hollywood Hayden. We're getting ready for day one of the annual yearling sale. Holly, every year at Harrisburg, it's first crop mania madness, and the marquee name this year, the world champion horse of the year, Trotter Donato Hanover. That's right. He won 19 in a row. He was horse of the year. He's the first horse ever to win the Peter Houghton and the Hamiltonian, and 50 of the 76 first crop trotting yearlings in this sale are sons and daughters of Donato Hanover, 30 Colts and 20 Phillies. He's a new kid in town or the sheriff, depending on your point of view. Well, Donato Hanover might be the rookie, but the established veteran is Muscles Yankee. And I guess you could say he's a Hall of Famer after siring the last three Hamiltonian champions. That's right. That had not been done since Stars Pride did it back in 64, 65, and 66. Established veteran. Remember, his first crop at Mr. Muscle Man, third crop at Strong Yankee, Tom Ridge was in the second crop, but then in the last three years, he's really stepped up his game. Dewey Cheatham and Howe, Muscle Hill, and this year, a $425,000 yearling by the name of Muscle Massive, three consecutive Hamiltonians, Muscle Yankee. He sells 55 yearlings here. So that's what it looks like at Harrisburg today. We've got a lot more to bring you, so stay tuned. We'll be right back with the Black Book today. Well, joined by Murray Brown, and Murray, I remember several years ago when uh, Andover Hall's first crop came here, and there was a, uh, it was a wild time. Everybody seemed to want an Andover Hall. Do you think we'll have the same thing with his son, Donato Hanover, this year? I'd be surprised if we didn't. They're, they're, you know, uh, Donato was a great, great horse himself, perhaps an even greater horse than his sire, and uh, his yearlings look great. They've got a wonderful attitude. They trot. They're well-gated got their ears up all the time. They're a very nice bunch of horses. And it's a unique opportunity also because we have Muscle Hill comes out uh, and Dewey Cheatham and Hound next two years. So basically Donato Hanover has the forum to himself almost. Uh, kind of. And from this point on, of course, it's up to him. If they do well, he'll, and, and I'd be very, very surprised and disappointed if they didn't do well. But uh, if, if, uh, if he does well, he'll have it all to himself next year. Although there's still a lot of competition amongst the old timers, horses like Andover himself, Candab Hall, Muscles Yankee, Yankee Glide, they're, they're all great stallions. I, I can't remember a time in the last 40 or so years where there have been so many real good trotting stallions around. Now, Murray, how about geography? Geography seems to play a major role now in the buyers, not only who the horses buy, but where he stands. Oh, no question. Uh, you know, people buy horses to make money with them, and they, they want to be eligible to the rich sire stakes programs as well as uh, the world-class events. So uh, uh, horses from areas such as uh, Pennsylvania, Ontario, Indiana, New York have a huge edge over horses coming from states that don't have comparable sire stakes programs. Now, Murray, with the internet and with videos, do we have as many people visiting the farms to look at yearlings as we used to? Uh, probably not. There's a few less every year, although uh, wearing my Hanover hat, this year our attendance at the fairgrounds was perhaps a little better than it's been the last two years. Is Harrisburg still a place where you can get a diamond in a rough? Absolutely. There's, you know, there's something for everybody. It's, it's a department store of horses. Uh, uh, there's something for every budget, for every possibility. You know, perhaps the greatest bargain ever sold in, in, in uh, all of harness racing was $900 spent for, well, I'm having Fresh a Yankee. Fresh Yankee yeah. here. Uh, I had a brain cramp, and, you know, she went on to be a great international star, first American-owned uh, horse, or, or first North American-owned horse to win the Elite Lop, and... Uh, there have been many, many other bar bargains since then. You know, I saw you get a stat you came out with right after the Hamiltonian. That I think seven of the eight stakes winners that day, on Hamiltonian Day, were sold at Harrisburg. That's big. That is correct. I, I don't think anything comparable has ever happened. That's a huge number. Now, uh, the best way to get a racehorse nowadays, a racehorse, underline race, is that maybe buying him as a yearling? Because Perhaps. people aren't giving up their racehorses in this Exactly, or, or if you want to buy a made racehorse, you're going to have to pay a huge premium for it. Uh, people have so many opportunities to go out and make money 
racing horses that they're reluctant to sell them and unless they think they're getting more money for them than, than they're worth. Murray, for, from a breeder standpoint, when they hit the wire in the Hamiltonian with Lucky Chucky and Muscle Mass of a 10,000 and a $425,000 yearling on the wire together, was that the best of all worlds for a breeder? I think so. It shows that, you know, you can get them in the, any price range, anywhere. It, it's a terrific thing. And, of course, both of them were sold here at Harrisburg as yearlings. And let me ask you also about some, some really nice sires only have limited crops. So if you want maybe a glide master, you don't have as many opportunities as, say, some of the other sires. That is correct. That, uh, you know, that holds true for a horse like glide master, a horse like chocolatier. Uh, they look very good off of their first crops racing as two-year-olds this year. But there, there's just not all that many of them, uh, I guess, due to fr some fertility issues, at least initial fertility issues. Now, going into the sale, what are you thinking right now prior to the sale for this year at Harrisburg? I, I'm, you know, I've been called a, an optimist, and I guess I am, but I think I think we're going to have a real good sale. I think the uh, the stock market has, has been very, very good the last few weeks. I think people are somewhat financially bullish because of the Republicans' gains in, in the uh, in, in the House and the Senate, uh, I, I think, and the, the biggest part of it is there's never been the opportunity to race for more money than there is right now. The busiest man in Harrisburg, Murray Brown. Thanks for stopping by, Murray. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. The Bow River, 14 karat gold equine jewelry collection, has some of the most unique custom equine jewelry designs. The master craftsmanship of our designers will provide a piece of jewelry you will treasure for years to come. By use of state-of-the-art equipment and hand finishing and quality stones will give you the craftsmanship and a piece of jewelry that exhibits the fine quality you expect and will enjoy. Our jewelry is 14 karat yellow and white gold set with brilliant cut diamonds. Our designs seek to capture the world of horses and the relationship they have with their owners. Wearing one of these unique designs will recapture the horse experience you expect. Our satisfaction guarantee ensures your complete satisfaction with our products. If you are not satisfied with our merchandise, return it to us in its original condition for an exchange or full refund within 30 days of purchase. You can be assured that our prompt professional service will provide the service you expect Visit us in the Northwest Hall Exhibitor Area or anytime at www.bowriverjewelry.com. Bow River Jewelry. Original designs. Quality you can trust. I'm joined by Jeffrey Snyder. Now, uh, Jeff, support your local stallion. You did a really good job with Cam's card chart, but to be honest with you, he really didn't need your help. He did it all on his own, didn't he? Well, in the early days, uh, he needed the help because when he first uh, started out, everybody used to knock him a little bit with the, uh, the heads, the ugly heads and all this. Uh, they don't stand right, but uh, we had big confidence in him, and uh, he's demonstrated his ability in the breeding shed. So now he doesn't need any help, but we give him some anyway. Another guy who doesn't need any help from anybody is Rock and Roll Hanover. What was it like racing him in 2004 and 2005, horse of the year? And would it be fair to say that he's exceeded expectations as a stallion? I would say that's a fair uh, comment because he is such a good, I mean, nobody expected him to be a good stallion, but not as, not the super sire. You can't count, you can't expect that, that he really, has turned out to be. So I would say by anybody's expectations, he's exceeded them. But uh, he was a great horse, and he's turned out to be a great stallion. But a lot Which of people, doesn't always hold up to be the case, but in his no. case, uh, he's, he's done it. Yeah, a lot of people forget that 2005, Village Joe was ranked number one in the experimentals, and he finished second in the pace. That was you, one, two, in the Meadowlands pace. Right. And we also finished one, two in the Metro as a two-year-old. When rock and roll set the world record, so uh, First that, that was a, that was a yeah. good year. So we used that money to uh, finance subsequent yielding purchases. Does that mean rock and roll Hanovers are in that book circled by you? Every one of them. Are. Every one circled. Every one of them is circled. But 
uh, okay. you know, we just have to pick the best ones and, uh, you know, we would hope it, for the best. Would it be fair to say that you're looking only at the high end? Would that be fair to say? Uh, that would be unfair to say. Cause, unfair. Because every, everybody looks to get a bargain. Okay. I'm, I'm looking for the next world champion. Okay, so you don't really want yourself, uh, you know, a horse is going to be an overnight type horse. You want you want a home run here. I want a home run. Okay. And hopefully, I don't. Well, we won't have to spend that much. But if we have to spend that much, we'll spend that. Much. And you've rounded the bases before a few times here, so you know what home runs are like. Right. Based upon uh, the number of horses that we've bought, we've done pretty well. That's okay. So, uh, do we have any particular area we're looking? I haven't noticed you with a top three-year-old trotting colt in the past, have I? No. Are not. you due for one of those? Uh, I'm due for one, and uh, we bought one down in Lexington, which we are very hopeful on okay. in the early early results. Okay, you won North America Cup, Meadowlands Pace, Jug, all kinds of races, but no Hamiltonian. So right. there's, a, there's still room on your room there, a mantelpiece area there for a little trophy. Absolutely. I'll make one. I'll build an, uh, if we win the Hamiltonian, I'll build, I'll, I'll build a shed outside and uh, erect a trophy room out there. Okay, so I'm going to look and uh, <laughs> I'm going to check out the Jeff Snyder purchases. Uh, any uh, Donato Hanovers on your list? I already bought a Donato Hanover. You did? I don't know if I have any room in my in my stable for another one. How about the pocketbook? Is there still room for a Donato? Uh, the pocketbook, yeah. Okay, good. So I think you should get there, one. There's always room for that. Okay, Donato should be one on the wish list. Okay, Jeff Snyder, you've been there before in the winter circle. You're at Harrisburg. Hopefully, you can do it again. I won't be in the winter circle here in Harrisburg. But, uh, you've been in all the other winter circles. But I've been in all the other ones. Right? Okay, we'll do it again. Thanks, Jeff Snyder. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bob Marks from Peretti Farms, and uh, Bob, something happened this year, had not happened since 1966. The sire won the Hamiltonian three consecutive years. His name is Muscles Yankee, and nobody knows him any better than you. How's he doing? Well, Muscles is wonderful. Basically, he's going to be 16 years old. Uh, he's breeding very vigorously. I, mean, I would imagine we're going to have another full book for him next year. Is there any difference between the first crop and this year's crop for Muscles Yankee? I think they are accepted much better for what they are. Because initially, people didn't know what to expect from a Muscles Yankee. Uh, they tend not to be the streamlined, so-called modern horse that people were expecting. But once Mr. Muscle Man came along, and some of the other ones came along, that changed. People know that they might be a little coarser than uh, some of the other horses, but they know how functional they are, and people are, people want a muscles to be a muscles. That's what they want. You know, some people, you don't hear hardly anybody talk about revenue, but revenue, uh, break the bank, and hot shot blue chip, pretty big breeders' ground night. Revenue, unfortunately, is a, uh, a situation that uh, I'm not so sure that the business in the state that it's in is prepared to accept them. Revenue will definitely, uh, he will, what, what basically what he's, what he's going to do is he'll fulfill that need to add revitalized gene pool. That he will do. Unfortunately, he's not going to get two-year-olds, and they want two-year-olds. I wouldn't be surprised if Hotshot Blue Chip is one of the best free-for-allers in the country next year, and if Break the Bank races at four, I would imagine he'll be right with him. There's no question that revenue... Uh, will get a lot of wonderful age trotters, a lot of Nat Ray candidates. He just may not get that many Peter Horton candidates, and that's unfortunately what the yearling buyers want. Now, is the getting a yearling nowadays the best way, you think, to also get a racehorse? Because with all the money they're going for with racehorses, four, five, six-year-olds, nowadays nobody wants to give up a good horse. Unfortunately, that's correct. Uh, I think one of the problems is, is that the purse structure needs a lot of revising. Because I think a lot of the guys who buy our yearlings, they need a place to race them. Uh, it's like when you look at the thoroughbred uh, cards, you'll see maiden special weights going for forty, fifty thousand dollars, and I think we need to do the same thing for our two and three-year-olds. It just may not be uh, a top stakes caliber. Bob, with the last decade or so of the internet and videos, do we have as many people closely inspecting the yearlings at the farm like you used to? No, basically, the, I, I, would admit, I would say that I think the business has dwindled down quite a bit. And of course, the internet makes it easy for them to see the horses in motion and not necessarily be at the farm. I think another problem, too, is the fact that uh, people are traveling all over the place. It's even like if you analyze uh, 
last night there were major races in Canada, major races in Yonkers, major races in Balmoral, major races in Indiana, and of course Dover. And then tonight we've got a lot of major races in Dover. So consequently, yeah, guys are traveling maybe where they didn't years ago. I see only five Wind Songs Legacies yearlings in the sale. Tell us about the unfortunate uh, circumstance surrounding Wind Songs Legacy. Basically, uh, Wind Songs Legacy, uh, he succumbed uh, as he was breathing, and basically like, like a heart attack. That's really what happened. Uh, and uh, I think it's a tremendous loss for the industry because I think Wind Songs Legacy was going to be uh, a very, very significant sire. Uh, it's one of our motivations for acquiring Lucky Chucky. And Lucky Chucky, tell us about that. I mean, uh, he looks certain to be this year's three-year-old of the year. And for the fourth straight year, the two-year-old of the year has come back as a three-year-old of the year. That's a trend we never used to see as often. I think we're probably not um, racing our two-year-olds that hard that early as we, as we used to. Consequently, they're coming along a little bit later, uh, later in the two-year-old year, and uh, consequently, I think they they have more left in them to be to now be three-year-olds. As far as Lucky Chucky is concerned, uh, you know he was a Wind Songs legacy. I've been yelled at by about 80% uh, of this industry, and everybody said, yells at me, and they said, well, "Why didn't you show me Lucky Chucky as a yearling?" I said, "I did. The problem was you guys didn't didn't like him, and everybody wanted muscle masses." He brought, he brought four and a quarter, whereas Lucky Chucky brought ten thousand dollars. The reason why Chuck Sylvester uh, liked him is that he raced the dam, and inadvertently the dam at the Meadowlands when Gerfine had her, there was a little problem in the stall area. A couple of horses got loose, and unfortunately the dam aerobics got herself inseminated. We didn't even know that until the fall when. She, kind of noticed she was putting on weight. And uh, Chucky was racing her at the time, and he knew that, you know, when we told him she was pregnant, so he knew that the mare was going to be a lot better than she really showed. And that's why he took the son. So there's a lot going on here, Pretty. See, Lucky Chucky sold, Muscle Massive sold, and let's see, Muscle Hill. Take us back to the moment in 2007 when Muscle Hill sold for 50000 What were you thinking at the time he sold? We didn't have the horse. We didn't sell Muscle Hill. That, that horse was sold by. Uh, well, you knew plenty. You know all Joe about Thompson. him. Yeah. yeah I, I, he was a nice colt. He had some flaws in him. I mean, I know a lot of guys, uh, you know, saw flaws in him. Uh, I understand he had a fantastic video, and I think that's what uh, Greg Peck, you know, attracted him. I think Chuck Sylvester also wanted him. I don't know that he had quite enough bullets to get to fifty thousand on the horse. But I did because Chuck had one of the brothers, and he did very well with him. I think it was Mutineer, I believe the horse's name was. Okay, now before we let you go, one more final question. Muscles Yankee, established, five-time leading sire. But the next two years, he's going to go up against Dewey Cheatham and Howe and Muscle Hill. Two of his sons will then start selling yearlings. How much of a factor would that be to the Muscles Yankee yearling? It will be a major factor. I, I think basically what happens is every sire reaches a point where the problem becomes when his daughters take over and now they start crossing with the new, with the new bloods like uh, Muscles Yankee Mares with Cantab Bull. So he's going to have that problem anyway. I would imagine to reach him and how they'll, they'll be very well received. And I'm sure Muscle Hill will be very well received. But, you know, Muscles Yankee in the twilight, mean, not that he's in the twilight, but he'll be probably breeding a little bit less mares. I think he's going to have his fans until uh, until those sons prove that they can't do it. And I have no, I see no reason why they can't. He's more like a Speedy Crown than he was a Valley Victory. And Speedy Crown kept going until he was in the mid-20s. And I would well imagine that Muscles will too. Well, Muscles Yankee and Bob Marks, couple of kings, king of the hills. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you, sir. Are you looking for standard bread, thoroughbred, stable supplies, or nutritional products? The Harness Shop Online specializes in bringing only the highest quality horse and equine equipment and products like harnesses, bridles, blankets, coolers, and apparel direct to you, our valued customers. Come see us at the Harrisburg and Delaware sales. Also, check the November issue of Hoofbeats for specials or call us at 1-866-469-8181.
Call or email us for a free digital catalog. The Harness Shop Online, your one-stop shop for horse and equine products, equipment, and supplies. Welcome back to the Black Book today. You know, here at Harrisburg and in the horse business throughout the country, Holly, you don't always have to spend a mint to make a mint. No matter what you spend at Harrisburg, you're going to be in play. Look at some of the bargains through the years at sales. Lucky Chucky went for only 10000 to Chuck Sylvester, no less. Another 10000 by Glidemaster. Went on to Triple Crown back in 2006. Rainbow Blue, a little bit more, 10-5. And she's the only three-year-old Sam to race past her three-year-old year among the horses of the year since 2003. Real Desire was horse of the year at four, only cost Blair Burgess 17000 And Mr. Muscleman, how about him? $2,000 yielding, later resold to the victors for 165000 And the middle market is not a bad place to be either. It's kind of like the NFL, where a mid-range draft pick can easily turn into your franchise quarterback. That's for sure. Look at some beat somewhere. He sold first at the Red Mile, 40000 Bunny Lake. If you raised your hand back in 1999, you got her for 37,000, 2001 horse of the year. Gallo Blue Chip sold here for 50,000, later resold for 100,000 to the Mark Ford Barn, horse of the year in 2000. And Donato Hanover went for 90,000, his first crop goes this year. But by the same token, the high end is a lot like the lottery picks in the NBA. There's a good chance they can become a cornerstone for your franchise too. That's for sure. The Panderosa certainly looked the part back in 1997. That's why he sold for more than anybody, 250000 Rock and Roll Hanover, 190000 here. And Jeff Snyder certainly got his money's worth there. Cabrini Hanover, well, 350000 set a world record of two, division winner of three. And Muscle Massive went for 425000 won the Hamiltonian, and the year he sold as a top-priced yearling, his brother, Muscle Mass, went for 525000 And what this all shows is that no matter what your price range is or what your budget is, there's something for everybody here at Harrisburg, and chances are pretty good you can end up in the winner's circle in some of those major stakes races. More of the Black Book today coming your way, so stay tuned. Joe Thompson from Winback Farms is here. Let's see, Joe, we got uh, Rainbow Blue, Muscle Hill, uh, Vivid no Photo, intended. No Pan Intended. Better's Delight, is he over here, sir? Uh, yeah, we sold him. He we sold right out here. It's a pretty good place to buy a horse over here, Winback. Pretty good. How's uh, what's, uh, this year's consignment looking like, Joe? Uh, we got a good consignment this year. It's, uh, all through, through the wholesale, we've got uh, a lot of good horses, a lot of different sires, and uh, you know, it ought to be a good sale for us. What if I only look at first crop sires? Who am I looking at here? First crop sires? I want to, you know, I want to be that fashionable. I want to get, the, I want to be the one of the first guys in. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think we, I, we don't have many of them. Well, I'm gonna go to the videos then and check. You got videos of all your horses? Yeah, right? we do, we do, we do. Okay. Now, what about some of the established horses that you have? Some of the established sires. Who, who are the, who are the guys? Who are well, the go-to guys? You know, we got Rock and Roll Hanover. We got, I love, we got a Conway Hall filly. We got a lot of Angus Halls. Uh, we got some Royal Majesties. We got a little bit of everything, so um, it's a good consignment. Now, okay. Winback, uh, there's going to be a lot. There's going to be a lot of good horses that are going to come out of this this consignment. It'll be, hit the track. Now, Winback, you have uh, there's there's different venues. Tell us how that works. Different states and, and Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us how that works for someone who's just just relatively okay. new to the sport. That's good. One one of the things that uh, is very key, or uh, you know, in any business where you want to find out is where you can make the most money. And so what Winback has done is we've been uh, We've been pointed at the places where the slots have made the most impact. So Ontario, we're big breeders in Ontario. We're big in New York, Pennsylvania. Uh, those are, and, and we have a you know pretty good group down in Delaware. So, so those are four four areas that have the slots. And what it amounts to is the slots help supplement the purses, and the purses make uh, you know make it an easier deal for people to be able to make money in racing horses. But so is it tougher? Big deal for us. <clears throat> tougher for the guy to get a bargain though in those places? I mean, if I'm looking for a bargain, would I it be tougher it, in Pennsylvania or New York? Compared to some of the states that don't have it, I think you could, uh, you know, you always have the, the horses that are going to going to uh, compete on a national level, the best horses, and they'll be in, they'll be in the grand circuit. So, but if you have a great sire stakes program to back your horse up, just in the event that he's not one of the top 10 or 15 horses in the country, then uh, sire stakes where you, you, you'll do well. So. Logically, you will pay more for horses in those states than you would in a state that doesn't have a good sire stakes program or doesn't have the slots to back them up. Now, do you find that people coming here 
have already done their homework, you know, between the internet and the video and everything else well, prior to coming to look at the horse themselves? Sometimes. I think it's a 50-50 deal. I think a lot of them come in and they, they trust uh, the, the judgment of the people that, that run the consignment. You know, they look for horses and for a particular area, of kind of horse, a colt, filly, trotter, pacer, and the people that have those horses will steer them in the right direction for the ones that they like. doesn't mean that they're going to be the best horses, but it means that... Uh, you know, they're going to steer them to the ones that they feel are, are the best prepared and ready to, ready to go and sell. Uh, we've had some horses that have come out of our consignment. I mean, Rainbow Blue was a, was a $10,000, $11,000 horse. So, you know, obviously nobody caught her. But, and she went on to be Horse of the Year and probably one of the best uh, three-year-old pace and fillies ever. Yeah. Uh, and Lucky Chucky, also, Lucky Chucky was $10,000 yeah, last year also. $10,000. Yeah. And I think that, uh, you know, Muscle Hill, he was a $55,000 yearling, so right here. Stood up over there, and uh, you know that's not that's not an outrageous price for a horse that went on to win as much money as he did, and uh, arguably one of the best trotters ever. How much interest was there in Muscle Hill but, uh, that you can remember lot. prior to selling? Well, you know, at this sale, what you get is you got a lot of people that come in looking for trotters, and they look at all of them. So, you know, obviously, they we didn't attract the right people because he only brought fifty-five thousand dollars. Now I'm sure that those people kicking themselves after he sold and after he started to race, but. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Joe Thompson, have a good sale this year. Win back. Uh, tell people to come on over, and uh, you'll be here the entire week, right? Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Great. <laughs> you know, when you buy a yearling, that means you can race next year. Well, Casey Coleman, two-year-old fillies, looks like you got two of the best this year. Uh, tell us how that worked out. Uh, both of them just I bought uh, Pretty Catherine. We paid good money for. We paid 120 for her here at Harrisburg actually, and ID like I paid 13,000 for uh, at Lexington last season, and uh, both of them ended up being very good fillies. And the three-year-old uh, Western Silk ain't too bad either. No, she's been a sweetheart. She's almost had a million dollars this year. Tell us about uh, the, the rest of your barn. How's it doing this year? Very good. Had a great season. Uh, like we started with some bumps and bruises with obviously Sports Rider hurting himself, but he won the NA Cup first, and we had some other nice ones that hurt themselves along the ways. But really, uh, we're just over six million now this year. It's been a great season. Would it be safe to say you have a hands-on approach? I know you come to the sale. You're there the entire time, and you're there working. Yeah, I'm always, like, I pick all my own yearlings, and, uh, well, actually saying that, no, John Leviakis picked up Pretty Catherine himself, but every other one of my yearlings I pick all myself, and uh, I like to be very hands-on. I'm invested. Anybody will see that I own pretty much a quarter of every horse in my barn, so uh, I need to be hands-on. So your catalog and the videos, everything else is done before you get here, but then you really got to you must see for yourself. Yeah, I've been to most of the farms, too. I go to a lot of the farms before I even seen them here, and I like to see them in the fields when you can, and it, it's a lot of work. It's a ton of homework trying to pick out the right ones. What's your preference? Is it uh, back home? Is it, is it Canada? Is, is it Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey? Where is it? You know what, as far as, far as sires, I love Ontario Sired if you can get one. I absolutely love them. Now our studs aren't as strong as what I would like them to be, but our program is bar none. It's a great program. Um, realistically, after Ontario Sired, I don't really look at the sire stakes all that much. I'm, I'm looking for a home run horse. I, I want to win the Metro and the North American Cup, and everybody else does too, but I really don't go on sires. I, uh, well, I go by sires by mean as far as what where they're standing. I'm Ontario if I can get them, but after that, I really don't care. Wait a second, you won the North America Cup with sports riders. Do you want to do it again? Of course. <laughs> now, tell us about what happened sports writer for those people who don't know. Uh, he heard a tendon. He, he heard his tendon. He had to be shut down early. He was only going to need about six weeks off, but the way the schedule, I wish it would have happened earlier or later, obviously, but where it happened, it just screwed up our whole season. He had a chance to go to stud in Australia, and that's where he is right now. Now, so is it possible he could be the heir apparent to Art's place himself as a stallion? I sure hope so. Uh, right now, like if they look anything like he looks, have his guts or speed, if they have just a little bit of what he's got as foals, um, I guess he's doing a real good job down there. All the mares are in full and he's got quite a few bookings to some very good mares, so he's going to get a good shot, it sounds like. What's the ratio of uh, pacers to trotters in your barn? You don't train that many trotters, right? I have one trotter and I have probably about 65 pacers. Will that ever change at any point? Will you, do you want to be in the Hamiltonian one yet? No, well, obviously anybody wants to be in the Hamiltonian if you could be in a race like that, but it takes a lot of uh, a lot of trotters to try to get there, I think. And actually, there's one trotter in the sale I have eyed out, and if it goes in the, for the right price, I'll probably bring it home. But after that, I, I'm really not a trotter person. Well, you're not going to tell us the number right I'm now. I'm not going to tell you the okay, number. Doctor, no. I'll try to find out later on when I follow her around. Tell us about, uh, about yearlings right now, because yearlings uh, seems like that's the best way to get yourself a racehorse with a premium on racehorses being what it is. Is that, is that the case, you think? Uh, for sure. And you know what I did? Anybody that knows me, I did a 360. I used to be all 
claimers. I never did a baby in my life till about five years ago. Well, I did them with my dad learning, but uh, I did my first baby about five years ago. Her name was Luxury Sealster. She made about 200000 and then I just kind of got into the babies, and now I've kind of went full swing the opposite. I'm pretty much all babies and not a whole lot of claimers no more. So, you, But you can still make money with the, with the older horse. I mean, if you want to come here just Friday and Saturday, you can still come here and get yourself a racehorse. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's all kinds of horses in this sale. Once this big, thick book's done, there's another big, thick book, so there's no shortage of horses here. What end are we looking at here? The low end, middle end? Do you have price uh, ranges for yourself in each horse? I'm sort of all over the place. There's uh, with prices, there's some that obviously we got to expect we're going to pay a good dollar for if we get them, and there's other ones I got picked out that I like that I really think I might get for 15 to 20. Um, so I, I've got ones picked out from that range right up to 150. Any uh, famous underbidder stories for yourself? Uh, you know what? I haven't really had too many that I've that have turned out that I was the underbidder. So far, I've been lucky and kept my hand going until I got the horse. Okay, Casey Coleman, we know you do your homework. Good luck at the sale. Thank you. Come visit our vendors at their new location, conveniently located in the Northwest Hall next to Winbeck Consignment. Amy Wildman's staking service is back again this year. Big D's Tack and Vet Supplies. Black Magic, the only source for Flex Tight Premium Horse Liniment. Bow River, fine equestrian jewelry. Brodeur, Sulky, and Harness Manufacturers, where quality meets performance. Come visit Custom Embroidery by Rita. FinTac, one of the biggest producers and wholesalers of horse equipment for trotting. Lee Visual Imaging Solutions. EB. Setting the pace in standard bred horse transportation. Mira, the leading manufacturer of harness clothing in Europe. Pensbury, the name you can rely on for jog carts and sulkies. Come check out the all new HP X Core wheels. Regal Colors. Providing the highest quality harness racing silks and accessories since 1934. Telstar, we've changed the whole look of sulkies around the world. The Harness Shop Online, your online tack shop offering high quality horse tack, equipment and supplies. And Harness HD, the leader in standard bread production. These are just a few of the many vendors now located in the Northwest Hall. Don't miss them! One, well, Adam Victor Jr. is here. Adam, uh, notice the black book in your hand. What are, we, uh, what are we looking at here at Harrisburg this year? Oh, we're checking out the first crop Donatos, seeing how those guys are uh, in the market for some New York breads. You cannot not look at that program and the rock and rolls there they're here to stay did uh explosive matter give you and your father kind of a taste of that high end of the trotting game yeah that was uh well we had muscle uh, mr muscle man but that was an older trotter he uh, explosive matter was our first top young trotter and uh yeah we got a taste and we want more of it what happened to mr muscle man that year in the hamiltonian he was a three-year-old of the year yeah. as uh, in, in 2003 but gee the Hamiltonian so much about timing. He just had a little bad luck there. Yeah, I mean, he was—he came out and he was a vicious second in the Stanley Dancer to Power to Charm, who was the favorite that year for the uh, for the Hamiltonian. Uh, left from the nine hole and, and ran a big mile. And the Hamble, he just didn't come up. It was probably one one or two of his only starts in his career. He just didn't fire. Wasn't really sick. I mean, we were having a little bit of a throat problems early on in the year. But uh, that was sort of the end of it. He came out next week in the Townsman... Uh, Ackerman, I think he was off by 40 lengths or something. It was a rainy night, the field was scattered, and he lost by, I think, one length. So he just came charging, and he was, that was it. Now, uh, I want to know, we didn't have a four-year-old or a five-year-old this year win a Breeders' Crown race. All six- and seven-year-olds won all four races. Wow. Is that the best way now to get a racehorse, is buying them as a yearling? Well, there, there definitely is a disconnect in the business in that trying to campaign a three-year-old is by far the most expensive thing for owners to do. Um, and with the money so good in overnights, it's tough to buy older horses. 
So you really need to invest for two or three years in these yearlings once they show you what they have at two if you think they can be an older horse. I mean, that's something we're looking at more and more now is if you have a good two-year-old that won't be a top three-year-old that you can't ship across the country and pay the big staking fees, is it now economical to sort of coax them through their three-year-old year and prepare them to be an older horse, which you can make very good money on? And I think the game's changing that way. People are going to have to start doing that. And I think sometimes you're going to have to be able to withstand an off year or two also oh, yeah. because, uh, you know, nobody can be guaranteed great years every year. This is the first year there's two or three three-year-olds that will not be top-tier three-year-olds uh, or two turning three that I usually would get rid of, but I know they show the signs of being good older horses are sound. I'm probably going to try to, you know, coax them through the next year, treat them easy, and see what they can do at four and five. Which is your most important tool? Let's see, the Internet? videos or your own eyes going to the farm? Um, well, I think the most important tool is the page, first of all, so I still i am a big believer in there needs to be pedigree there. You know, lightning will strike here and there, but um, you know, if you stick to the things that you like and, and families that work, I think that's most important. I also like to see crosses that historically have done well. Um, and besides that, I just think they need to be an athlete. It's the same thing like walking on the street when you see a top-tier college athlete or a professional athlete. They walk and they have mannerisms that are in a different way. And you got to try to spot that out in these horses. And you know, I'm probably <laughs> no good at it anyway, but I think that's what you, that's the ultimate goal to get an athlete. I know a co college coaches can't teach speed, especially quick speed. Exactly. I know that. So exactly. that's uh, something you look for and try to get it here. Yeah. Uh, is a set limit on the top of your program page actually etched in stone? Uh, no. No. Not so right. it's not really a set limit. You, you have a number that you don't want to go past, but heat of the moment, you know, how the sale's gone beforehand, where the market is, you know, you're going against the market, right? So my top number on a couple of the ones we're looking at may change based on where everyone else is buying. It may go down, it may go up. Um, but there's usually a little bit of a leeway, not much. So I wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't double what your top number is. So back back in uh, 2007, we had four stallions. Remember, we had Tom Ridge, Cantab Hall. Yeah. Uh, they all came out the same year, revenue. And uh, now, it looks like Donato Hanover might actually have the first crop field to himself. How does that affect his prices, you think? Well, there's a lot of them, so that doesn't help. Um, and I think there's actually a lot of good sires that have stepped up this year in the trotting game. Uh, so I think that will sort of vary the field a little bit, but it's still an, on an individual basis. He's going to sell well. Uh, just by the sheer numbers, I don't know if he'll be the top selling Trotting stallion will probably be close, but everyone wants to look at them. You know, he's a great horse. The weaning reports you got were absolutely phenomenal, um, and people want to see him, so they're going to be looked at. You know, great two-year-olds don't necessarily mean great three-year-olds. All Speed Hanover comes immediately to mind. That's just the way the game is, right? Yeah, that's that's why you know people have different things. You, you want to put your two-year-olds away in good form, in good shape, but you just never, never know. And uh, you know, if you if you did, you'd be everyone would be a lot richer. But it's it's a crapshoot. Every time that horse puts you know, gets behind the gate, you just never know. So if you see anybody following you around the sale, it's not really me. Uh, even though I do want to know what you have circled. Yeah. So Adam Victor <laughs> Jr., thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. As we wrap up this opening edition of the Black Book today, one thing that always seems to surprise me, Holly, is the trend here at Harrisburg and at every yearling auction. Even though there's less racing opportunity for trotters, they're always in high demand with buyers. 515 trotting yearlings will sell. That's 44.5%. Yet only one out of six races in North America is for trotters. The reason, I think, is twofold. Hambletonian dreamers, they're out there aplenty and overseas interest. And with the slot and rich racing programs in Ontario and throughout the United States, there's a huge demand for racehorses. The value may still be buying yearlings and developing them yourself rather than paying those high prices. Yeah, and for the first time ever, this year, no four, no five-year-old won a Breeders' Crown race. Two six-year-olds, two seven-year-olds, and they're all four coming back next year. It's clear that the best way to get yourself a racehorse Get them right from the start. And we've touched on first crop sires, and also there's still a buyer's preference for offspring from horses of the year. That's right. Now, let's not forget Tell All, the 2007 Pacer of the Year, is also in action this year. His first crop will sell. And as for horses of the year, six of them will have yearlings here. Malabar Man sells a couple. Cam's Card Shark, you know him with Shark Gesture. Donato Hanover is 50. Glide Master is 21. Rock and Roll Hanover, the second most of any sire in a sale, with 74 behind Only Dragon again and Real Desire with 14.
And the eyes of the harness racing world are always on the Meadowlands on Hambletonian Day each and every summer. It's the biggest day of the year in our sport, and the Harrisburg influence was certainly felt again this season. It really is Super Bowl day for harness racing. Seven of the eight stakes that day won by Harrisburg graduates. Plenty more to come all week long on the Black Book today. Tomorrow we'll take a look at the opening day sales results, talk about trends, talk to some of the buyers and bidders and more. So be sure and stay tuned for more from the Black Book today. Thanks for watching.